this class is basic manicures. Now I know a lot of you are interested in nail art. Um, that is the advanced class. So this is the prerequisite. This just will go over a lot of the basic things you need to know. Uh, we'll cover basic services that you will deliver uh, in your work in a salon or if you have private clients. A lot of these things you may already know just from your own experience, you know, doing your own nails, your friend's nails, but this is just to give you a good uh, framework for your further study. So there is no text for uh, this portion of the class. We will be using some handouts. We have some templates. These can come in very handy. Nail art design. You can use these to practice when you get to the nail art pieces. And you can also actually apply polishes and things like that on these to practice. And then we have some different templates showing different nail shapes that are popular, um, different kinds of products and samples, the structure of the nail anatomy is here, and there's some information about different kinds of polishes. And we have some more uh, templates that we will be practicing on as well. This is kind of a large, oversized one. This is more of a realistic size one. So, if you brought your kit today, you will have some of these templates. If not, we have plenty at the tables. So, I'll just leave this here for now. We're going to start with the basic tools. to um, take care of the nails. Now, we always recommend if you have a client, um, it's a good idea to make sure to wash their hands. You can have um, wet and moist towels um, or just, you know, at the sink is fine. Um, and then apply really nice oil. We like the recommended vitamin E oils. It comes in a variety of thicknesses. This is 14,000 ml. You can get lighter and heavier. This is a good uh, nice weight to really moisturize the nails, uh, the cuticles, and just the skin and the this is the JC brand, which is cruelty-free. We do, as a reminder, use only cruelty-free products uh, in our cosmetology school, and we recommend you do the same. If they're very high quality, all natural ingredients, they are tested safe without um, harming animals. Yes. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention it. In the back of the room, as usual, you find your coffee, tea, and uh, some snacks. All right, so once they're all uh, nice and moisturized, you want to start to work on the nails. It's good to have a variety of these little orange sticks or cuticle sticks. These are particularly small ones, um, they come in different sizes. And they've got the pointy end and this beveled end up there. So with the beveled end, that's what you can use to push down the cuticles. 
Now, if the cuticle area is um, needs a little more moisturizing than the Vitamin E, uh, you can soak them in an oil like this or a special uh, cuticle oils as well. Sometimes you want to soak it for five or ten minutes, just depending. And the pointy side can also be used to push down and difficult areas can also be used to clean if you need a little extra cleaning um, underneath the nail. It's just the all-purpose versatile tool to have. So once you've shaped, got your cuticles all shaped, you need to take time to do each nail. Um, if you have any Pieces. There might be some dry pieces. You can use a little clipper like that sometimes, or a very fine uh, uh, scissor. Usually, a little clip works well. If you want to shape the nails broadly, some people like the clippers. I happen to prefer. Uh, nail scissors myself. It's worth investing in high quality scissors. I like the ones from Italy or Germany. Wonderful blade. Sharp. At least everybody's nails are a little bit different and it's nice to have a variety to um, meet the need that you might have. So. And then once you have the basic um, shape, you're not going to get the exact shape with the scissors or the clipper. You will use a file, and like the metal files, I tend to like these more traditional files. This side is a much finer, it's like a sandpaper, but very, very fine. And then this is a little coarser. The coarse side is where you use first, because you want to bro just broadly get the shape that you want. It takes off more of the nail at one time. So you go around like that, and then you do the other side. So we're not going into too much detail because I know a lot of mo most of you, probably all of you, <laughs> have done this, you know, yourself. So don't need to go over that too much. But the main thing to know is um, don't saw back and forth. You tend to get an uneven, uh, rougher edge. You want a very smooth edge. So you want to just go in one direction like that. And then once you're very close to the shape you want, you can use the other side to refine the shape even more. And this will smooth any rough edges. Always check that you don't have any rough edges. Um, sometimes a client will leave and then, you know, snag their nail on their, on their scarf or their hose or something. You don't want that. So sometimes I'll actually check with a fine piece of uh, fabric and just run it along with make sure there's nothing that catches. Okay. Um, let's go over the shapes. Just, this is probably more shapes than you might run across in day-to-day -day clients. 
but it's good to know that they're out there and it's you know it's always changing fads and fashions and styles excuse me I'm kind of thirsty today um, so we've got the natural which is basically what I have it's kind of a general round rounded not too high away from the green and black then there's the oval which is a longer nail sort of the same oval shape at the top it's just more extended square is longer and squared off at the top as you see here this is called a squirrel <laughs> it's a made up word between a square and an oval so it's square, but the edges have been rounded. So flat across the top, slightly rounded edges. And we've got the almond. And that is probably closest to the oval, except with a more of a point. Not a super sharp point, but just more of a point. Um, round. It's got cut off a little bit, but round is basically like the natural, but just left longer. Now we've got a little more unusual ones down the bottom row. The stiletto. That's like a Elvira or something. Elvira, mistress of the night, whatever her name was. <laughs> she had that late night. She was a host of a late night. Mistress of the Dark was that it. <laughs> anyway, occasionally people want this for a very dr dramatic effect. Mountain Peak is a little pointier than the almond. Not as sharp, obviously, as the stilet. Um, the edge is a little unusual because it comes to a basically triangle at the top. The lipstick is an angled. You don't see those too often. The ballerina is very long and squared off at the top, slightly tapered. Can you see that okay? Slightly tapered and squared off at the top. And then the wide, which is less common. It's actually that, it's like a flute almost is a bit wider than down here. Also not as common. So if we will probably most commonly get re um, requests for the natural, the almond, um, and the round, at least in my experience. These are a little bit less common down here. Maybe the mountain peak is a little bit more common as well. Or the oval. Some people like the squared off. I never um, use that myself, but it is not. It is a popular look as well as these are. So this one you can tell is squared off, but it is tapered. But it is not. The edge corners are not rounded. So does anybody want to match up? Which one this is over here on the chart? Amy? Yes, I think you're right. It is closest to the ballerina. It's tapered. It's long. It's tapered. It's squared off at the edges. Alright, so that is good to have handy in your tool chest. Um, you can get different lots of different ones. Some have even more shapes. Um, and again, there are trends that come and go. So we always recommend you you check you know, blogs and websites and um, subscribe to um, some trade magazines as well. This one 
actually has the um, more common shapes. They've got the oval, the rounded, the square, the squoval, the almond. Now they say the stiletto is amongst the popular ones. This one is a little less dramatic than the other. But you can see, according to this sheet, they consider those the most uh, common. And then they've got other less common ones up here as well. This one print is a little bit smaller. We won't get into the male anatomy um, in this course, but I think in uh, the advanced course we will get into that a little bit more. Okay, so we've got our nails shaped smoothed off. And before you apply any polish, you want to make sure there's no traces of the oil. You know, the oil is great for the skin, the cuticles, but it needs to be removed before applying any polish. So you can um, either have a little moist towelette, or um, at your station, or a little cup of warm water that you can just use a little cloth to wipe off the nails. Um, the moist towelette is good with some witch hazel. It's inexpensive, and it makes sure to get any oils off the nails before applying any of them. Um, and if they do have nail polish on already. I forgot to mention that. We do recommend um, the lots of brands of natural uh, acetone free. We always recommend acetone free. There's different scented ones. This is spring bouquet scented. Of course you can get unscented as well. You can always ask the client if they prefer unscented. This has organic, plant-based ingredients, conditioner, essential oils, and safe on natural and acrylic nails. This works um, pretty quickly. You don't have to use go over multiple times. So just take a cotton ball, soak it, and uh, let hold it for two to three seconds and then it will just come right off. Now if there's multiple layers of polish you might have to repeat once or twice. So yes again there are different brands just make sure to look for cruelty free um, and acetone free. There are soy based ones as well this one I don't think is soy based. Uh, but those work very nicely as well. This is called Blossom. So after you have removed the polish, that's when you um, clean the nails with your moist towel. So let's see, we've got everything shaped. Now, if they do not want a particular um, style of manicure, like a French manicure or something special, just the standard one, there are layers ways you can approach it in terms of how many coats and how saturated a look they want, how uh, long they want it to last, is it for a special event, is, do they need something super sturdy that won't chip easily. Um, so all of these things will help you to decide on 
know which polishes you want to offer to them because there are different brands and different characteristics. Top coat, which I really recommend, clear top coat, but keep it thin. You don't want it to be too thick. So, um, I'm to see if I can use one of these templates here to show you. I really don't need to show you the top coat because it's clear. <laughs> but let's just see. Let's try it on one of these. Top coat. Okay, as I was afraid, it was kind of going through the paper. You can buy uh, these templates in waterproof papers. So they won't soak through. So this is Mineral Fusion, which is a really nice brand, but there are lots of top coats and un under top coat and undercoat. Actually, they use the terms interchangeably because you can use the same undercoat or top coat. Now, um, I brought a sample of polishes different brands. We don't have a wide color range here as a, in our sampler kit, but as you know, there are every imaginable color out there. The old style one, which is one in the pinks, and peaches, and mauves, and beiges, and uh, reds. Now you can get yellows, and blues, and green, and black, and brown, and gold, and Emerald, just about any color you want, and so we recommend once you settle on um, a favorite brand of yours for your professional salon, you get a wide range of colors because you never know what the client is going to want. For your home use, um, We've got this cute little caddy, which is nice. It comes with the Zoya colors. I think it holds four. Yeah, it looks really cute. <laughs> it's porcelain. Um, so in terms of the brand, here, I'm going to tell you a little trick that you may not know. So, many of the upper scale brands, these are cruelty free, no formaldehyde, no toxic chemicals, uh, good for the environment, uh, no preservatives. They're expensive, but they're well worth for all those reasons, but they will not discolor or damage the nails themselves. It's very important. If you've ever, which you probably have, used inexpensive, this is an example of an inexpensive um, nail enamel. It can come, came in a little set of three for like, I don't know, five dollars or something. So you might like the color, but if you routinely apply them directly to your nail, or even just over an uh, undercoat, you will get some discoloration, you may get brittle nails, you may find when you take it off, um, sort of an orangey shade, yellow. So the trick is if you want to use some, buy some inexpensive ones because you want a wider range of color. This is just for yourself now. I don't recommend this for professional. In your salon you always want to have the high quality brands. But at home 
if you buy a base set for the high quality brands, just need some neutral colors that you like, apply that as your undercoat, let it dry, then you can apply the inexpensive, flashier, or trendy colors on top of that, and you'll get to show the top color. Maybe a little bit of this showing through, depending on how bright the contrast is. But this will protect your nails from this. So that is my little tip for you. Um, it took me a lot of years to figure on my own, by the way. I don't know if that's in any book. Maybe it is, but I just figured that out over the years. But maybe everybody else knows. I don't know. So that's Physician's Formula. I think these were purchased at a grocery outlet. So something you might be at CVS or um, Walgreens or something, Target. And you might say, oh, that's a pretty color, you know, it's $1.99 or $2.99. Just remember that. Um, you can try it so you'll find the colors. Just put it over a higher quality base coat to protect your nails. So this is Karma Hughes. No toluene, no formaldehyde, no DPP. A lot of toxic chemicals are used in some of the nail color sometimes. So this is just a sampling of different um, brands that we have for the class. So you can practice it. There's that one. SC is kind of a popular uh, mid-range brand. It's just separated a little bit. I think it's getting old. We've had some of these in the studio for a while. This is sort of is a nice brand. Their shades go by number. This is 115. The nice thing about that is you don't get hung up on the name and thinking how the name reflects the color. So you might call this like uh, pale shimmery peach or something. And somebody might have an idea of what that means and somebody else might think that means something else. So this way, it's just the number, and you can see the color and decide for yourself. So I like these mauve ones as well. This I think we've had forever. This is Revlon, which is not a cruelty-free brand. So it is the only bright red, classic red we have in the studio. Um, there are a million shades even of the classic red. So you may find yourself having like half a dozen red shades in your collection or even a dozen depending on uh, your clientele and what they like and the age group that you serve. So, let's see, we're going to try, okay, so that's nice, it did, the clear did not um, soak through too much on the paper, so we can try this one, and we can try this one. So I am going to suggest, show you what I mean, we'll take one of these um, Zoya polishes, always give it a good shake. A lot of the polishes, by the way, come with 
the metallic blue um, sh highlights, shimmer. If there used to be, there was just shimmer or there was flat like that. But now a lot of them have a metallic shimmer to them. So there might be a gold shimmer or a silver shimmer uh, or a bronze or something. So that can make a difference in the end result. So make sure what you offer to the client so people do not like the metallic shimmers. In which case you just want to get a glossy just another thing to be aware of is the metallics. They're sort of popular right now. So let's try this. Um, this one is called Lauren, so we'll just name them without any reference to the color. What color nail polish is Lauren? I don't know. I would call this a kind of a buff mauve with a hint of pink. I don't know if you can see. Okay, let's try putting it over here. I don't know how well this is going to work, but we'll try. So always start at the bottom. Take smooth upward strokes. I like to do the outside edges first. Sometimes I flip it around and then finish at the top. Now, you usually do not recommend going over more than once because it tends to get too thick. So you can see the effect there. I'm going to show you some of the different colors just so you get an idea. So that's Lauren. This is similar but a little bit darker. It's called Jill. They like, Victoria likes to just use women's names. So, and what you can do, which is kind of fun, is to get a lot of these little sheets and um, Color them in with your all your polishes that you have, and put oopsie put the uh, this one isn't going here. This one so smoothly, I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's because I can't talk and do this at the same time. Okay, oops, I got a little messy there. I should have brought a tissue. I don't have a tissue. darker than that one. Um, what was I saying? I forgot. And now we will do Zana, which has a little more purple in it. Oh, I know what I was saying. So once you fill out these with all the colors that you own in your collection, and um, make leave room when you make a copy or buy your templates to write, you know, Zana, Lauren, Zana, whatever the other one was. I forgot already. Jill. So you can make a very quick reference of just what you have. You can also show it to the client. So you might make one of these with all your peachy pinks, let's say or all your uh, blues and greens or, you know, whatever you have. And you can say, you know, which ones do you like? So they can, instead of looking at the bottles, which isn't 
always the best way. They can look at a sheet like that and it's custom made just for the colors you have. So that's something um, we recommend. So, okay, we're going to do Zana. Let's see if I can do this a little better. Always make sure to get the excess off. You don't want it to come on too thick because that's when you get the peeling, which you don't want. All right, starting at the bottom, going up. These good quality ones don't smell as awful as some of the other ones. That's another nice better way to oh, all right. There we go. Now this one has a bit more of a rose hue to it, but it's still kind of a neutral side. And then the last Zoya one we have for today is Clementine. Definitely more pinkish, um, maybe orange. And I think this one has a gold metallic in it. I don't know. Pinkish orange, I guess I would call it. But sometimes it looks different on the paper than it does in the box. getting hungry, feel free to go back and grab some snacks if you want. Anytime, you don't have to wait for a break. I think today we have some uh, bagels and uh, some strawberries, I think. And coffee and tea and some juice. I think we have orange juice as well. That's a pretty color, but I tend to be partial to those peaches, peachy pinks. Now we have the thumb. Um, but we only have the four Zoyas today, so I'm going to, we only have one of these mode colors. This is new to our collection at the studio. So you get to be the first class to see this one. to know is um, some clients want to lengthen the look of their hand. They might feel like, oh, my hands are kind of short and stubby. So if that's the case, you can ask them. It's no problem to ask them. Um, then you want to get a color that's very similar in tone to their skin tone. And you can actually hold up the bottles if you want because when it is similar in skin tone then it basically lengthens visually the whole hand and your finger. So it's the nails are the sort of an extension. So that is the peachy pink. It's kind of similar to that one. A little bit lighter. So on the paper, they dry pretty quickly. Um, when you're doing it on a client, usually two to three minutes. If you haven't done it too thick, you know, if you're doing it too thick, it might take longer to dry. Um, but a nice thin coat, it's better to do multiple thin coats than one or two thick. So keep that in mind. Now, uh, if 
you want to try some of the other ones. Let's see. Let's try this one. This is a new template that we just got. Let's use this smaller one. I think I'll fold it down there. So there are a lot of these available online. You can print out the ones that you like. So far. Mm. Well, yes, the once you take the business um, class, you'll learn more about charges, you know, how much to charge for manicures or, or just the polishes or um, the wide range of surfaces. So, um, but generally speaking, depending on the level of the salon that you work at. It might be anywhere from uh, 15 to $40, depending if they're gonna get nail art, if they're gonna, do you need a lot of cuticle work, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so let's look at some of these others. This was the um, Physician's Formula, which is a sort of a Almost, I would say. Let's try that on the pinky. It's sort of a fuchsia. It's kind of pretty, actually. Some of the inexpensive ones are tend to be streaky. So thin coats, but multiple coats should take care of the streakiness. And again, you're going to put it on top of a neutral, something like this, a neutral base coat. I like that, that looks pretty. Let's do um, the Karma Hughes. This is called First Kiss. What was the name of this one? California Goddess. <laughs> That's California Goddess. So this is First in the orange or tourmaline, pinkish. We do tend to have a lot of pinkish orange again. Um, we've had a, lot, had a lot of these samples for a long time and uh, those are the most common color families tr traditionally. So we still reflect that. And I think it's probably true. You know, younger women maybe like to fool around with the blues and greens and black and purple and whatever. But, you know, if you're in the workplace, you're probably going to go for something a little more traditional. Just depending on where you work, of course. If you work in a record store, <laughs> you go wild. So the Essie is a similar in shade. It's another kind of peachy pink. And another good thing about um, doing this is you get a feel for the different brands. How thick and thin are they? How much do they streak? Uh, how easy do they go on? Some go on easier than others and you'll just learn as you try the different so that's why uh, this class is so nice because um, you, without investing a lot of money, you get to try all the ones we have here. And uh, this is just what we have in the lab today. But once you start doing your more lab work, um, we'll have even more for you to try. So you can see that is a more orangey style. And do we get all of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, we've got the red. All right. This gal is going to be all 
wants it to party with her multicolored mail. So let's see how well the red goes on. Red can be streaky, but I think this is a pretty good quality. Sometimes it'll get streaked if you haven't shaken it well enough. So make sure to shake very, very well. That's a nice red. And I think I took all the colors, so we'll give her a red thumb as well. Reload your brush. Um, we recommend don't go more than two nails without reloading your brush. Again, depending on how long the nail is and how thick the polish is. Because it's not good to have to reload your brush in the middle of the nail. Oopsie. I don't have a good angle here. Let's see. Having trouble with this one because it's so narrow. again you can write the names of the colors down the brand and the name and at least that's a preference you can put the clear coat which you don't need to do on this obviously but for a client um, once you've done probably two coats is, is typical of the polish um, some polishes are so good that you only need one that's kind of rare. Usually you will need two coats and then make sure to dry adequately. They do have little finger dryers in most salons. Just a little warm air circulating. They put their hands in it. Dries it in like a minute or less. That way you don't have to drag out the appointment. And then the top coat Some are so glossy and that they don't really need a top coat, but we recommend it. Most clients like it. This one should be dry by now. I'll do a little top coat there. Adds a nice extra gloss, extra shine. Um, and helps protect. Well, they're not quite dry underneath. Getting some streaks. Okay. Just ignore that. Make sure it's totally dry before you add the top coat. Helps protect them against um, chipping, peeling. You don't want to go too many layers because then you get peeling, which is not good. Of course, chipping also might happen if it's too thick. Oh. So, again, multiple thin layers. You might be tempted to go thick, but resist that urge. So that is our class for today. I hope that you learned something. And um, actually there's still about 10 minutes left of the class. So if you want to take some charts, or actually there's some over the desks, and take some of the polishes welcome to do that or you can leave um, early a little bit earlier if you want.